Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone on Zoom. There we Good go. Good morning. Okay, it was 44 degrees in my car when I got in this morning. So I had two coats on and a scarf. Thank God that it's a little warmer in here. So welcome to Skyline Church. This is for Christ class, entrepreneur for Christ class. And I truly appreciate you bringing visitors. I think we have a few new faces in here today. Just, just raise your hand and you can get your first time. All right, we got one here in front. Wonderful. And invite your friends on Zoom too. Let's just open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this gathering, Lord. I thank you for all the wisdom that pours into this room weekly, Lord. I thank you for your presence in my life and everyone's life here, Lord. Just abound with miracles so we can see your face, Lord. We know that you go before us. And I just pray that you give extra blessings to our speaker today, Chad, Lord. He does such a tremendous job in his daily work and then allowing him his extra time to come here and serve us, Lord. Just bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. And with that, we have Mr. Chad. Well, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. It's back up here. Uh, As you know, I work with the Salem Media Group, and uh, you might notice something different up here. And that would be my title. Uh, through God's good grace, I have been promoted to digital sales manager for the Yay! Salem Media Group. And uh, I would like to start off by saying um, Danny Machado has agreed to an 11 year extension with the San Diego Padres. Uh, uh, yeah, I brokered the deal. I brokered the deal. <laughs> um, now, I've had, I've had a couple presentations here, and to tell you the truth, I didn't know I was presenting until Wednesday. And so I, I put something together, and there are some repeat slides, but it's the path to purchase, and that is what consumers go through from when they start considering buying a product all the way to actually conversion or purchasing that product. And so this is the 2.0 on where small businesses should really focus their efforts. Um, I'll go ahead and take it to the next slide here. And this is um, the path to purchase. It, and that starts at branding. And branding are, are larger brands than you can see. But to do branding work, you really have to have a large media budget, a large advertising budget. These are things like Coca-Cola, FedEx, um, Nike, just do it. Those, that, those are branding campaigns. And if you, if you want to get let everyone know what your brand stands for, what it means, how it makes them feel. And then you have lead, lead conversion, which is actually where the rubber meets the road. That's when people are actually buying. They're buying right then and there. You're giving them a specific task to, to take, whether it's on the computer or uh, purchase in store. It's the use of motions to get people to purchase, but that's where the transaction happens. Is, is the lead, the lead conversion. And a lot of people call those KPIs. Oh, sorry, I thought it was on the next slide already. Uh, but what I'm going to be focused on, focused on today is the magic in the middle. So you have branding on one side, lead generation at the end of the purchase cycle. The magic really happens in that middle area. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. I'm going to give you a recap of some of the other tactics, the, the proven digital marketing tactics that work with us and, and with all of our other customers. Um, and again, it's not just advertising, it's chadvertising, guys. <laughs> and then, of course, we have enough time for the QA. But if you have any questions while I'm, I'm here talking, please just raise your hand. I'm happy to answer. Now, again, branding, the use of marketing tactics to shape how a brand is understood by the consumer. How does it make you feel? What does it stand for? That's what branding is really made for. It's, it's for um, brands that want you to feel about them a certain way and really have you figure out what their niche is in the marketplace. And branding is, it can be expensive, but perfect example of branding are the Super Bowl commercials that you see. 
you know, not every company can afford a $4 million 30 second ad in the Super Bowl. So you obviously have to have a large advertising budget in order to do brand new campaigns. Lead generation, like I said, that's where the conversions happen. A lot of people call them KPIs. This could be a phone call, a, a form bill, or a checkout button. This is when you already know what you're going to purchase. You've gone all the way through the funnel and you're making that final purchase decision. And taking a look at the actual path to purchase, you can see the awareness phase, that's where the branding happens. And from a media tactic standpoint, this would be television, outdoor billboards, newspaper, magazine, radio, that's creating awareness of your brand. And that's, and that's where those larger campaigns come in, larger advertisers. Um, search, this is where our findability, very critical because if your brand can't be found, nobody's going to know who you are. And so that's, that's going to be a very critical part of your marketing. And then next you have reputation, what people think of you. Um, if you're on social media uh, or your Google reviews, what are people saying about you? Your Yelp reviews, what are people saying about you? Um, it's very important to both control those messaging, even though you can, there are ways to combat those uh, if you do have negative reviews, if you have an example that I'm going to share with you as well, how you can com combat some of those negative reviews because they happen to everybody. I mean, if somebody has a bad experience and they, they will write, even if you have 99% of your reviews are that are five stars, you're going to have that one person that had a bad experience for one reason or another, but there are ways to uh, remedy those situations. And then you have conversion, like I talked about, and that's really where uh, the purchase happens. And so I'm going to be talking about findability and reputation primarily here because that is the process between branding and conversion that's the most important. So the first is your Google business profile. That's something that every business should set up. It is what Google uses to refer people to your website. It gives them all the information about your company. Um, it also houses all your reviews. And so if you're not actively going out and asking your customers to give you reviews, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice because those reviews are turning into the new currency in digital marketing and, and basically how people find you. The more reviews you have, if you do a Google search, that company that has 245 five-star reviews is going to rank higher in the Google search results page than a company that has a 3.3 and uh, only 25 of you. So do what you can with your Google group, Google business profile to get as many reviews as possible. But at the same time, it houses all of your information and this is very important for uh, Google to understand and rank you from a quality, quality score standpoint as well. SEO, this is the way that you just continue to work on your website and build links to make sure that you rise to the top when people type in anything related to your business to try to get as high as possible on that search engine results page. Uh, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but Google has recently uh, changed its model to a continuous scroll. And we've all talked about a Google page, trying to be on Google page one, right? That everybody wants to be there. Well, now, if you want to go on Google on both your phone and on your laptop, on your browser, it will just continue to scroll for up to 11 pages before it says, do you like more results at the bottom? So. Um, it leaves that user on that quote unquote first page longer, but there's more room for your brand to grow up that ranking. And you can see here 84% of searches skip the paid ads and go directly to the organic search results, which is why it's, why it's important. And those paid ads are the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is pay per click. And these are any of those sponsored ads. I know I've talked about them a lot in the past, but anytime you see that when you search, they're normally at the top of the page. So it's sponsored ads, and it's most more than likely relevant to your business and what you're trying to, or what that what that searcher is looking for. But people pay for those ads because they want you to click on them and then convert on their site, call a number, or take some sort of action. <coughs> so listings, there's um, more than 300 different directories, local directories where your business can be listed, and this is a report that we can call where, and I'm using all you I can continue to use this. Sorry if I'm in your way here, but this is a quick report that I can pull to figure out um, how uh, consistently you're listed across all these different websites. Again, my this report only pulled it in the top 70, but um, in this case, it was Green Key Financial, it's a customer of ours in Costa Mesa, and their listing accuracy is only at a 90% 90, 90 inaccuracy, I should say. So there's only 10% of accurate listings here. They do have the big four under control, and you have to have these. These are the most important. 
this is google your name facebook and yelp but then if you go into like the map quest the city search merchant circle you may not have heard of these but people use them and when we look them up they're not they're not even listed here so people use these uh, can't find them and so that's a big part of being able to find the building being found online and this can be updated very quickly by uh, using a, a number of different services. It's a quick way that we can check to see how your findability is in the marketplace. Now, as we go into reputation, this is obviously what we're talking about with reviews, what people think about you. You can see here blogs, articles, reviews, social media, word of mouth falls into this category. So what other people are saying about your business, very important. Um, in this in this case, this was a very scathing review. I don't know if you can read this from the back, but um, yeah, it, uh, it it does not do this company any just or any a good service by any means. I don't know if you guys have watched uh, uh, Better Call Saul, but the last the last six years, um, the owner Mark Saul Goodman from Better Call Saul, he makes makes the owner. But makes so good that it, uh, it's all good that for better call Saul look like a paragon of decency and honesty. <laughs> but he basically, it, this is not a good review, it yeah. happens to a lot of people. What? I, I'm not sure. Uh, right there, all right. Um, <laughs> bad reviews they have to everybody. And I'm not sure in your business if you have any bad reviews, but one thing that you can do to combat these is come back with a response. And so in this case, yes, this was a terrible review. But if you come back and say, hey, our team wants to give it make it our sincerest apologies concerning the issues. We pride ourselves in maintaining the highest quality standard. Please call Jill at 952, blah, blah, blah. But this at least shows the users that you're attempting to make it right. Right. And if you were to just read that review and move forward, if you would say, wow, I don't know if I want to do business with this company, but reading this, it does make this a little bit better. You might want to work with this company, especially when the rest of the reviews are five stars, right? But once in a while, you are going to get a flyer where somebody is going to say something that is not good about you. And, and there are ways to come back and make those better. Unfortunately, you can't get these reviews deleted. Um, a lot of people try to. They spent years trying to do it, but uh, that's not possible. So that's how, that's how you face with those reviews. And next, social postings. Um, a lot of people, what they do is they get started with their business. They start they start up their Facebook page. They have an Instagram and a Twitter, and they start posting a, a lot for the first couple of weeks. They're really into it. And then all of a sudden, it turns into a couple of months. And then it turns into a couple of quarters in between postings. And unfortunately, this is something that Google looks at as well. All the search engines do is how relevant you are in, in the search <coughs> engine. Check, check, there we go. All right. Back to business. Come on. Nothing I can't handle. Nothing I can't handle. All right. So, again, social postings, you can see the one on the left here, November 3rd, 2021. And yes, I just pulled these this week. So, John's plumbing and router, he's not doing a very good job here, guys. This was uh, one and a half years ago when this happened. And all he's doing is uh, saying plumbing, plumbing issues, call me. Or call us and a bunch of hashtags where uh, the painting company in San Diego they just posted this a day ago. They use a great testimonial of one of their customers and just saying thank you to them. And I looked at the, the rest of their posts within every three or four days, they had a new post up there. So if you're thinking about getting a job done by a painting company, something somebody like uh, this, you would go to their Facebook page because as you do get closer down, down that funnel and start making some of those decisions. You do start learning, wanting to learn more about their business. So you look up their Facebook page and say, okay, what are, what are other people saying here? Go closer. Go closer. There you go. All right, thank you, sir. 
And so it is important to keep your social postings up, up, updated and constantly updated too. And there, in a, in a lot of cases, what companies will do is say, "Hey, I need somebody. I need to hire somebody in social media because I don't really know what I'm doing. I need, so I need somebody that, that knows what they're doing that can handle my business." Um, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, there are services out there that, that you know, you can do offer one of those where we will actually post for you and it'll be relevant information about your business. Uh, and especially with the development of AI, we can now post specific information about your business in a very timely manner. It's two times a week, four times a week, um, including posting things about holidays and those types of things to keep people engaged. Yes, Mark. On the, on the, uh, the negative um, posts that you get the negative comments, even back to Yelp on what would be a second slide, do they surface to the top or are they just listed in the order that they come in? It seems like Yelp likes a negative comment. I um, mean, do they? Because those are interesting. The good ones can be boring. But so does, <laughs> so does Yelp bring them to the top of the search or anyone else? Or do the negative comments just get filed as they come in? It's a great, great question because uh, each entity does it differently. Google will do that chronologically as to how they come in. So the most recent is at the top. But Yelp, to your point, to give customers a good understanding of what could be good and bad about a company, they will list the positive and then a negative right underneath it. So they'll list both. So they'll they'll make sure that they don't uh, they don't discriminate. They want to show the best review and they want to show the root, uh, worst review so you can get engaged in the middle of, of what kind of company it is. And if you want to dig deeper, you can read the rest of them that are in the middle, but they will break some of those four reviews up to the top, but they will I think put the best one first and then uh, kind of the uh, poor one second because they do want to give the customers a full Full view of what the business and how their services are. And along with just maintaining, your, yes, sir. Maybe with the nonprofit, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and what I'd like to know is um, is this good to help uh, to help with an income to operate? To help with the income to operate it, it would give you it would give users a chance to comment on your nonprofit and, and even the post about hey this is what I, I donated to this cause because I like them for X Y and Z reasons. Um, for anyone else reading this, you should too. And you can even post a link as to how people can, how people can contribute money if that's what you're asking. You can use those to your advantage in that way. So absolutely, if you have some people that, that love your, your cause and have contributed, you can ask them to go and leave a review for you and just tell the people where they can contribute as well. That way, when they're reading about you, they know where to go and they can help as well. Yeah, it'd be a great use for that, actually. Yes, sir. So I'm the CEO of the nonprofit and founder. We do have a Google um, business page. Okay, good, good. Um, we pay Mr. Print for it because they have a uh, search engine optimization platform. I see. Okay. And I was just curious if you know what your thoughts were on continuing continuing it that way, or is there a better way to go about doing that? Because I, I you know, I'm iffy on reviews doing it mm -hmm. because there are those. People out there that will just complain, even though they've never been in the business. Yes, right. Like you saw, well, that was a, a real example. But yes, there are people that will leave more reviews. But uh, to your uh, your question, uh, there are a lot of different companies out there that will come to you, especially new startups that have an established a Google business profile and then uh, elect to do them for that business. And then and all you need to make sure of is that you have access to it as well. And they don't have the sole access to it because I have some situations where a vendor will start a Google My Business with Google Business Profile or a company and then almost hold it ransom from that business and because the links go back to that vendor site. So then they back charge that company for any leads that come in. So just make sure that you have access and you can log into it at any time. That's very important. 
HAC area. Um, good coverage of uh, how to manage <laughs> the negative chat. Um, one thing that I've been wondering about um, uh, when when Anton was up uh, earlier this month and, and uh, last fall is um, where is the trust curve, Chad, of some of these platforms? Okay, I mean, you know, I, Google is a giant; it's a Goliath. I mean, everybody can agree on that. But you know, I I, I hear in a lot of circles that people are losing trust of these platforms. They just are. And you're you talking know? about the platforms themselves, and, like, and the like platforms the, um, themselves. The exactly. I yeah. mean, it's bad enough, you know. We, you know, a, a step on somebody's toes, you know, but, mm -hmm. but when we're kicking off in the first place, you know, with a, with a less than honest uh, uh, platform. I mean, Twitter yeah. just got bought by, by Musk, you know, and, and he's cleaning up their act, you know, I mean, he is, but I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't have even set up an account with him uh, only a year ago. Right. And I think you hit the nail on the head years ago, the trust, wasn't even a question with these companies, but now it is. And that is where it's up to you, the consumers, to choose which companies you, will, you are going to trust. And that will ultimately define which ones survive and which ones don't. Because the ones that are, are have bad actors involved and do you know edit certain um, players from posting, you know, that's not that's not American. And that is something that I think users will eventually weed those out by themselves. Because we're smart people. I believe that. Yes. I have a question. What I found out with customers is that give them a temp while your customer's there for a 10% discount, or you, with your convenience, I like to give you give myself a you know a, a review while mm -hmm. the customer's there. You fill it out for them while they're there. You give a temp that now we get more positive. Absolutely. Yeah, and there are companies that will actually, as soon as you I mean it's a painting company. As soon as you come out and do the final review, you say, hey, you know what? We will give you a 5% reduction in cost if you do this Yelp review for us right now with five stars. And they bring an iPad with them and they put it right in front of them. I've seen doctor's offices yes. that go around with iPads and have people fill out the reviews right there. Very <laughs> smart tactic, very smart tactic. But you have to watch out because Google is kind of is getting a hit. To, they'll actually, if you're, if you're using a Gmail account to send an email to a customer, Telling them you're going to send them a gift card to fill out a review. Google will flag you for that and they will not post that review. And then they will also send you a, a caution about it, just that you cannot pay for it. But yeah, but if you do it, if you walk around and you do it in the right manner, there are, there are ways to get it. Yes, I, I actually thought it was a no no that, to, to pay them if you're giving them a discount, like giving them money. So, what am I? What am I missing? In this? Well, this it would be a in, in this particular case it would be something that you you handled right at the point of transaction and just said, hey, we can. I've I've actually done it with a moving company. They said if you if you fill this out right now instead of the eight fifty OS, it'll be eight hundred. And so I said, okay, I'll fill that out right then and there. Who's going to track that? There's no way to track it. So as long as there is no way to track it, there is going to be some form of that. But yeah. Gift cards, people, the companies are getting wise and to get paid to, to make those reviews. Yeah. Now, real quick, um, you probably mentioned this, but what's the proper amount of consistency for posting? Twice a week, if it's once a week? That's, um, that's up to the company and, and what kind of content they have. If, if there's enough content that's worthwhile, um, then I would say, continue to post, but there's, there's also burnout, just like anything else. You don't want to post too much. I would say if because you get if you post too much, people hit that unfollow button saying you're filling up my feed. You know, I don't want to, I don't like people. You're not relevant and you're not you're not doing anything that I need. So I'm gonna unfollow you now. But I would keep it at something like maybe two times a week. But as far as studies that have been done, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think that varies by vertical, by different categories, business category. Um, when Google flags someone but doing things like you just mentioned, do they actually have a person sitting behind a desk looking at these things? And and I mean this look how many emails. Go through Gmail. Absolutely. 
It's a good question. And it's, it's a combination. Or if it's a combination, they do have algorithms in place that will flag certain, certain comments or reviews because I had a company that um, they had they had some work done on a rental property here in San Diego, but they lived in Hawaii. And when they went to write a review on the company, Google flagged it and said, we're not posting this. This is coming from an IP address in Hawaii. It's not in San Diego. So they said no. And then once the company went back and said, hey, they own this property in San Diego, this process took three months with Google. A real person had to get involved and say, okay, they do own the property. We are going to post the review. But there are certain things in place, certain safeguards that these companies have put up, something like that, an IP address in another state that will... Um, but it's not going to be done for you see the question. But good question, very good question. So um, you talked a little bit earlier about how there are companies that will pay customers to give a five-star review. Um, well, okay, let's go back to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm not talking about uh, review farming going right. to the people and ask them to write focus reviews. Right. This is just incentivizing real customers that they have had to, to write a review. Well, I guess my question is, is because previously before that started, there were companies that went around and this had, this went on for like two to three years where they would actually sue the customers for giving them a bad review. Okay. And that's, uh, those are going to be like the review that I posted up here. Yeah. They go back for slander or- yes. right. so or it, do you yeah. know if that's still going on much? What's going on with that? Or did the I've, government put a kibosh on it? I haven't heard of a case of that in a very long time as ever. So I, if that did happen at one point, I think now just from freedom of speech, anybody's allowed to say whatever they want. I mean, under certain guidelines, they can't, you know, vote your language, there's other things that you have to take into account, but through freedom of speech, you have to allow it. Yes, Mark. <laughs> Um, in order to sue, you have to have damages. Um, so the idea of just the slap at lawsuits everywhere is unheard of. If you don't have any damages, you can't sue. Chad, I'm just going to mention that if you sell in places like Amazon, they have third party vendors that you can sign up with for like 30 or 40 bucks a month. And they will, the minute the purchase is made, they will send an email to the customer Hey, customer, you purchased XYZ product, and would you like to post a review about the product? And they'll also send them that says, Hey, customer, you know, XYZ company, you just bought something, a product from that company. Would you like to post a review about your seller experience? Mm -hmm. So there are those kinds of things available that are completely legitimate. Now, on the other hand, Amazon, uh, there was a big article about a year ago, they shut down a company selling from China on Amazon US that was uh, had a ton of bogus reviews. And they were doing somewhere in the vicinity of between one and ten million dollars on Amazon, and they totally shut the company down. Did not disallow them from selling it. On the US coming forward. Very well, okay. And yeah, those third party <laughs> companies that you mentioned, that is a service that Salem offers as well. And if you give us a customer database, we will go back and we'll ask them for reviews and, and whether it's Yelp or Google and just say, would you post, would you like to post a review? We can work with the retailer. But it has to be all, all on the other that These are people that have never heard of the company. These are their database of customers that they've worked with. And yeah, we can go back right. and work with those. Yes. Um, and then you have paid ads along with just standard social posts. And this is this has gone to where between the with Meta, between Instagram, and Facebook, you can target people down to their interests. You can target grandmothers who have a veteran in the household and two kids, and like watching um, sitcoms. You know, I mean that's how far targeting capabilities have come with both of these, to where if you're in your feed, and it's one of the things that I like because. It's when you have a captive audience. Uh, the customer has their guard down. If you know they're not interested in your product and they're looking at their, their nephew's third birthday pictures and then next they see an ad, 
for a painting company and they've been researching painting companies all day long. What a perfect place to reach them because they are captive and they're looking to leave their guards down and it's much easier to just put through the website and set it set an uh, estimate page. So and it's one click away. So Google Ads is a great way to complement uh, standard posting as well. And then these are the surround presence tools. These are uh, what I was talking to you about. One of the things that we do is we go in and clean up all of those directory listings for you and make sure that any time a new directory is added, we will make sure that your information is added to that directory, but make sure it's all consistent. That helps your SEO, it helps your findability. We have the surround reputation, which is exactly what Susie was talking about. We will go in, we will, we will respond to the poor reviews. We will also um, reach out to your customers that if you have used any customers you'd like us to go reach out to, ask them for a review, and then in turn get those reviews posted back on the site. And then last, the social element, we will go in and using that AI technology that I talked about, we will post for you as well. So you can choose to say that uh, two, two times a week or four times a week, and it's all relevant information for in your industry. So um, one of the ways that we can help. And if the end result here is that is your uh, digital health. And this uh, report that we can run here, um, and these are all the factors that it takes into account. Your website build, SEO, your social presence, your Google business pro profile, what you're doing from an advertising standpoint, and analytics, and you would make your analytics. And we take all this into account and then give you an overall score. So that same company, Green Key Financial, who had the four, um, the four uh, findability, so their, their, their presence and their listings were updated. They got knocked down a little bit for that. The score was 69. We like we can get the companies up into the 80s, 90, 90 percent level, but um, really this is a score that we would, we would consider needs a lot of work to, to get up to that company level. Yes. Thank you for this terrific information, Chad. Is it fair to say that if somebody's going to embark on this, they got to be committed to it, yes. like the guy did it once every six months? If you're going to otherwise just money down a raffle. Correct. Right. Okay. If you don't, if you go on to somebody's uh, Facebook or Instagram and, and you see that their last post was from two years ago, that tells me that they don't follow up on what they started from a company standpoint. So that's why it's nice to get something that, that is, you, if you're not going to hire somebody to work on full time, you're, you, 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 you've got to be on it or have a service that does it for you to make sure that you are consistent there. And then I have a lot more slides here, guys, because I think Mark was going to ask so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, this is just a quick overview of all the, all the digital tactics that we use at Salem Surround. But I wanted to get, uh, if anything, we still have a lot of slides, but I wanted to show you guys video advertising is probably the fastest growing form of digital advertising. That's because it does include sight, sound, and motion, uh, different, many different areas that we can advertise. There's connected TV, there's pre roll, there's YouTube, there's um, several different elements to use video. It is one of the most trusted forms of media because you can get that sight, sound, and motion. And I wanted to show you this. One of the, our newest features that we can do at Salem is create these whiteboard videos. A lot of people can't afford to put together a 30 second video, right? If you want a 30 second commercial, you're talking anywhere from 7,500 to $20,000 to produce a commercial. <laughs> you can get something done on the low end too. And this is this would be an example of something you can do, but this is a whiteboard commercial where we would ultimately take, use our radio station assets, create a radio spot, send it to our, our uh, design team, and then they would create something that, that's similar to this. And you guys have probably seen this in the past. I embedded this, so I hope it doesn't go. But I can send it out. Well, these Visit. slides will be on our website. Oh, right? Future in today's market is uncertain at best. 
get your business back on the solid ground by using your own 401k retirement funds. First off, the entrepreneur rollover stock ownership plan is ready to walk you through the details. First off, we'll set up your corporation, allowing you to roll over your 401k funds into your business. Money you can use for payroll, rent, inventory, and more. Best of all, this is your money and not a loan. No taxes, no fees. You may never have to pay it back. Give your business the assistance it needs to continue to thrive. Call Ursop today to find out how you can use your own retirement funds to support your business. Call 866-MY-URSOP. That's 866-MY-URSOP. Or visit URSOP.com. Now, we've all seen those in the past, right? And we've seen those types of commercials as well. It turns out that there is a, a, a very low cost associated with them. So if you ever wanted something like that for an, as an explainer video for something on your website, yes, Rick? So how much? Um, we can do those for as little as $1,500. And so it's a, a far cry from the $5,000 or $7,500 that it cost to, to do a, a real full blown commercial with a production crew and everything else. So. Um, and that's, I think that's for a 30 second, and then you go up as high for a full minute, uh, maybe 2,500 jobs. But you can use these for several different reasons, not just a commercial or advertising purposes, for as an explainer as well. So, several more here, but I don't know if I to get into these, but you can, the way you can use video, connected TV, um, uh, programmatic audio, geofencing I've covered in the past. Past. We don't have time to really get into this today, but uh, I think we all uh, you know what that is. That's when we tag you for location services. We did do digital out of home. These are video boards outdoors where this could be anything that, like you see here, it could be a bus kiosk, it could be at the gas station, it could be on the back of a taxi cab seat, right? You've seen those ads. We have a full network that includes all of these different locations. It could be within gyms, it could be movie theaters and corporate buildings and elevators we have a whole network that you can purchase a, a, a digital out of home quick example of what we're doing for a company called surrender lunches that just uh, um, uh, does lunch delivery in the Sorrento rally area so they were able to provide it to find locations just in a five mile radius around Sorrento rally uh, <coughs> retargeting this is when you follow people anybody that comes to your website we tag them, continue to follow them around and serve them ads. I'm sure you've all seen this when you're looking at a pair of shoes or something, you go to and surf the web and that ad for that pair of shoes continues to follow around, follow you around. And reporting and analytics, something that's very important for anything digital is we show you exactly how it's performing and we analyze and optimize on a daily basis. And then chat advertising, guys, this is, <laughs> this is what you get. When you <laughs> You get, you get campaign brand safety. We're not going to put you in any questionable web material or anything else. Campaign <laughs> management, there will be, be a team of eight other chats looking at your odd name. They're not all name chat, but, uh, but they will be looking at your campaign, making sure it's funny, uh, making sure raising their hand if anything looks off, and then we'll have a meeting to talk about it, figure out a way to solve it. But our ad ops team is growing daily. Just every week, I get a new email about the new people we're adding to our digital ad ops team. So, Again, it's uh, it's advertising, guys, and then we deliver results. <laughs> we deliver results, and we know that when we don't get the desired outcome here, you're not going to work with us. And so our job is to make sure that you work with us for a long time. The way we do that is by fulfilling our promise and selling your product. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. <laughs> And yeah, we might have learned some of that before, but it was actually very uh, topical for today. Thank you very much. And next week we're gonna have Susie and she's gonna come here. Yeah. 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 Uh, hope everybody has a great week going forward and attending our service, which starts at nine. And remember to invite your friends on the Zoom or to the class. And get here early. I did today for a change. But I was here. Okay, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the time that you give us here, Lord, and just keep our eyes open and focused on you, Lord. I pray for those who aren't able to attend, who are 
either healing or on vacation, Lord, travel mercies, Lord. I just pray for each one and the families that are represented here today, Lord, and just um, found them in miracles and blessings. And I pray for Skyline Church and our Christian community in San Diego, Lord. I just pray that you uh, just help us to stay together, we bind, we bind together, Lord, in your name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Marketing <laughs> <laughs>